Hey guys, I know it's been a long time. Um, I'm still somewhat recovering from COVID. Um, my, you're going to hear me cough because I still have <coughs> some respiratory issues. And this is why I put the disclaimer at the beginning of this video because I'm going to be talking about some real hard truths as a medicine woman, as a shaman, and what I know of what I've gained of why spirit has put me through this and why I had to see what was really happening to my people. Okay, so if you didn't go through the disclaimer at the beginning of this video, please do so because I'm going to say some things that are going to trigger people. Um, I am all about unity and love, but I'm also about people knowing what their lane is and where their place is without ego, without wanting power, without feeling that they need to be special because everyone's special and to accept who they are and what they're meant to be doing on this planet. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> so this is why I haven't been able to do readings yet or um, come online and my uh, during the COVID, my intuition was very much being siphoned by darker forces. Um, I'm going to be honest about the downloads that God gave me through some deep suffering for the last three weeks to the point where I couldn't even cook for my children or do anything for them. My son's class closed down, as some of you know, and that's how we got it. Um, it is real, okay? It is real. Um, but what I got through the downloads when I was talking to the virus, when it entered my body, is that it's a manipulated man-made virus, okay? <coughs> my kids are on spring break so if you hear them <laughs> um, I don't know how long this is gonna go but I think it's gonna go for a little bit so there's a lot of things that came through that I really want to share and more about like my mission and what's happening in the twin flame journey and um, how we have to form and build new communities Okay, because the communities that are being affected, we're consistently being locked down here in Canada. Um, this is a political agenda, you guys. Okay. And I hate to say it, but the manipulation of this COVID, okay, when I, Spirit's taking me to go back into when I got infected, I have been sick before. I have been healing my family without pharmaceutical drugs my entire life. I've had an interest in plants my entire life. Um, I've never taken medication for like tonsillitis or strep throat or anything like that. Spirit has guided me to the plants and I've made my own concoctions. I've shared those concoctions with friends. It works. They work great. <laughs> I'll eventually maybe make a recipe book for you guys. Um, but. When I got COVID, it wanted me to surrender myself to it. It it was like a, it told me that it was made in a lab. It told me, and this is before I followed anything on COVID. I wasn't paying attention to it. It's like, it's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to hold that vibration. But um, I'm going to tell you, like that vibration, it doesn't matter. Um... If you're a healer, sorry, showered guys, so it just, you know, you can see all my gray coming in. <laughs> um, <laughs> the God said, like, I got her for a reason because I'm a heavy lifter, a heavy healer. I can heal really deep things with you guys, especially if you ever come to a retreat with me. And I had to see what was happening with my people. 
okay? Because if you look at the statistics, okay? And I'm going to post some links down below so you guys can see the people that I've, I'm following, who I'm talking to. Of course, I always want you guys to empower yourselves and choose what's best for you guys, right? So I was being shown, um, and statistically, COVID affects BIPOC, BIPOC stands for Black Indigenous People of Color, okay? There is something in the genealogy of what has been created that it's attacking people of color. Um, I'm very healthy, okay? I'm a little chunky girl, but, I mean, I, I'm healthy. I work out. <coughs> I cook my, uh, very organic meals every day for my children. Um, we don't eat meat and dairy because of the factory farming of what the system has done to our animals. Uh, that energy alone is not healthy. Uh, and if you don't know some certain stats, 55% of all pharmaceuticals go to the meat and dairy that we put into our bodies. So please think about that, okay? Because the animals are infected. So you are getting infection no matter what you're eating, if it's fish, meat, dairy, okay? Um, it's not healthy. Um, and I, and I've known that my whole life because when I would go to Guyana, which is in South America, which is my family has a lineage of 400 years there. Um, I'm first generation Canadian. Um, I'm moving back <laughs> cause I, I can't do it here. Um, And the reason when I go there, the food tastes completely different. Even when I took my kids and lived in Bali, the food is completely different. Okay. Um, my kids had a hard time even conforming to food in Bali and in Guyana because it doesn't taste the same, right? Because it's not pumped full of hormones. It's not infected meat. Um, our food industry is aligned to pharmaceuticals. Okay. It's not aligned to your health. Um, and so I, for years, have been vegan, um, mostly pescatarian. It was only like the last year since ayahuasca was really on me to let go of the fish um, that I went back to being vegan. I was vegan a few years back before that. And thank God she did. Okay, guys. I don't know if I would be here if I wasn't eating healthy. And the state of my health that I was in. And I um, I don't smoke cigarettes. Um, I very rarely smoke cannabis. Um, so my lungs are in good shape. <laughs> so I, this was a surprise. And when COVID came into my body, it wanted me to surrender myself to it. And I wouldn't. And I said, I, said, I respect your power, but you respect the light of God in me. And God was telling me this is what's happening with people of color on the planet. Now, in the statistics, you're going to see government documentation and stats saying that, yes, of course, black people die from COVID more or people of color die more because they're living in bad places. They're living in um, not all of us. I didn't grow up in poverty. I grew up in upper middle class. OK, I have have been everything I ever wanted. OK, um, I'm. It was very whitewashed, I'm going to say, living in an all predominantly white suburbia of Toronto. Um, so much so that COVID had to show me what's happening to my people. Like, you guys, this is real. They're trying to kill off the healers of the world. And I'm going to get into that because the real healers of the world are BIPOC. Okay, we have a genealogy that's connected to the earth because we had to go to the earth for healing during colonial times. Okay, white people didn't have to do that and I'm not saying anything against white people. This is why I said about the disclaimer, okay? My children have white in them. My children are mixed with Inuit. Uh, I don't, sorry, that's probably not the right term for it. Indigenous, um, um, Eskimo. Uh, they have white and they have Indian. For me because my children have white genes okay um 
COVID did not bother them. They went right through it. They're young, too, right? I'm also 44. But God wanted to show me that this is a real thing. Okay? The system that we live in is based out of colonialism. The British monarchy is aligned to every first world nation. They have conquered six out of seven of the continents on the entire planet. And I'm bringing this up because we have to bind together as humanity, you know, and people have to be aware of what's happening with the energies. Okay, it's very important. And when I had COVID, I realized what was happening to my people, you know, yeah. that we're already struggling, you know, so I was eating like my doll and rice, you know, my, my mom grew up in very poor in Guyana, you know, they didn't eat meat and have all these luxuries of different kinds of varieties of food. My mom ate doll and rice every single day for her entire life in Guyana. And if you don't know what doll is, I'll put a recipe down there. <coughs> it's super healthy, okay? It has pulled my family through poverty and colonialism and British rule, okay? And it's super healthy. And as I was eating the doll and rice, I could feel this virus. It felt like an alien trying to overtake my body. Okay, I have been sick before. I have had fevers. I have had illnesses. I have never felt anything like this before. Okay, even the fever wasn't like a real fever. It was like my organs were on fire. You know, like it, I could feel the virus moving through me. It was moving like how ayahuasca moves through me. But I realize now that it was the ayahuasca that was trying to heal and move it out of places. Um, his mama loves me. <laughs> I love her. And, um, yeah, and, and it made me realize, like, even the stats that we're seeing, it's not because people of color, yes, there are a lot of people of color that live in poverty and stuff like that, but I'm going to tell you, a lot of us have surpassed the poverty line, and we're still being affected by COVID. There's something behind that. Okay, now God wants me to bring up, thank you Spirit, about the different lineages and how it is important for humanity to start coming together and binding together. You know, your lineage says a lot of where your healing capabilities are. Okay, and I'm not saying white people can't heal, but white people are here to heal their lineage. Just as I am West Indian, Indo-Caribbean, I am here to help heal my lineage of 400 years in Guyana. This is why I'm heading back. Okay, because my people need me. All right to reconnect to the earth, to do plant medicine, and to heal. And it's not like I'm not welcoming all the races. Of course I would do that. Um, but the whole aspect of <coughs> knowing where you are, um, thank you, Spirit, because the New Age community, I'm gonna, and I'm going to be honest, is ruled by white people. Okay, and I want you, to, I want you guys to really look at this. Every teaching that you see is a white person that has taken it from a person of color and is reselling it. Let's go at Reiki, okay? Reiki was taken from the Japanese and brought over. Now people are just doing a certification and saying they're a healer. This is not what a healer is. A healer is in your DNA and is in your lineage, okay? So very much like my lineage is was in South America for the last 400 years, the plants there talk to me, the plants that grow in South America, that is my lineage. That is why I have such a clear connection with plant medicine. And it's also why, you know, when I was 14, I went and drank from the Kaitour Falls uh, I heard spirit. I didn't know at the time I was 14 say, welcome home, Rena. And I was like, what? I heard that so clearly. And I'm like, welcome home. Like, I'm going to come back to Guyana. Like I was very whitewashed in my brain that I, I was a very proud Canadian. Okay. Um, the racism and how people treated me that I dismissed my whole life. It's a very systemic, deep conditioning of us to even reject our skin color, you know? And 
I completely rejected a lot of my culture, you know, because I grew up with a lot of white, I grew up all white people, basically, right? And COVID really showed me um, where that manipulation was happening, okay? Um, and so Spirit's bringing it back to take a look at the New Age community. If you really want to heal guys, right, and activate your gifts, because everyone has gifts, you have to heal your ancestry line. So you have to look at the New Age community. If there are white people giving Shakti Pat, they're not Hindu. They are not born in that tradition, okay? Unless a guru or somebody, you know, has um, acknowledged that there are different incarnations, different people that have come um, into a different body, okay? So there's very much the Rainbow Prophecy where there's a lot of redskins that have, which they call redskins, which are Indians, natives, indigenous people that have come back into white bodies, for instance, okay? But they will have a certain um, piece of um, indigenous blood in them. They're not going to be pure white. Okay, they're going to have something in their DNA that is Cherokee or Indigenous or Inuit or or some Eskimo or something. Okay, um, so that DNA can be re reactivated in that lineage to bring out their healing, to support that, and then to heal the the white lineage as well. This is why we have that mix. But if your lineage is say predominantly white, okay. Then, and say, let's say, for instance, your family has 300 years here in Canada as a white family, okay? Um, well, your lineage is to go back to the land and heal with the white people of what happened with that. Now, if you look at 300 years in Canada, white people killed off the indigenous people and, and, and kill and are very racist to BIPOC, okay? So... If that is your lineage, for instance, that is something that you have to heal. That's not something that you go run off to Mexico and all of a sudden become a medicine woman. Like, that's not a thing, okay? And no matter how much you're attracted to it, that may have been in a past life. That may have been in, in another incarnation, okay? But the first thing is to heal your family. And this is where I love Mother Teresa, and I have, I, I've loved her. She has had a heart of gold. Like, I, I loved her since I was young. And when I was 16, I heard her say, you know, if you want to help change the world, you have to go home and heal your family. That's step number one, okay? And if you have not healed your family, you will not have a clear connection. And you will not know your mission. And you will not know who you are connecting to in the energies, Okay, and this is where there's a lot of the new age dogma that happens that um, I don't believe and I never played in because I don't believe in a white person giving me Shakti Pat. No, um, I don't believe in a white person giving me Reiki. Okay, I will know, but you will know and you will too. If that energy, you have to go beyond what that person is doing, okay? You have to read their energy and be like, did they just go get a certification? Or is there something there that they are a reincarnation and um, it's true? You will know right away. If you're questioning it right away, you know that person is not for you, okay? So I'm not saying to go particularly just by the way somebody looks, okay? Because you don't know what's actually in their DNA and whatnot. But you will know the residents of that, okay? But the majority... I don't go to people in the New Age community because of that fact. I can feel it immediately. I'm like, why is this person trying to teach me yoga? Like, that's my lineage. Like, <laughs> like um, what? Like, you, you can't, uh, thank you. Spirit is saying you can't go and get a certification and learn and think that you're a healer. That's not how your healing capabilities and your talents and your skills come out. That's not how it happens. Okay. God chooses you. God brings in your your blueprint and your contract with God, okay? And God puts you in places. God brings it to you. Spirit brings it to you. You it just all of a sudden shows up in your in your field, okay? That all of a sudden you're like, is this my calling? And you'll be humble to it. Because if you are a true healer and you are here to heal the planet, it is hard for a real healer to accept their path. Okay? 
<coughs> people in the New Age community all want to be the guru and the leader, right? They all want the power of that. They want the power of that because of how it looks. They want the stature of being called shaman. Do you know how difficult it was for me to call myself a medicine woman? And to call myself a shaman? I'm like, no, that's that's not me. Like, that's not me. And, you know, I kept drinking ayahuasca and ayahuasca. was like, will you just admit it? And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, okay. Okay. I, I was very humble to this. Um, even to my gifts. You know, people want to be all psychic. I want to be seen. And, and, and people are like, oh, I have a clear channel. I'm all this. It is a very humble thing. You don't brag about it. Okay? I'm only now starting to step into my power and be like, yeah, I can see clearly. And yes, I'm going to own that. And yes, I'm going to just be honest with what I see and what I know. Because it's how I lived my entire life. I can't change who I am. And it has taken me my entire life, I am 44, to come into that acceptance, right? If you watch people in the New Age community, the majority of them are so quick to be like, yeah, I'm special, I'm a, I'm a star scene, let's just, okay, I'm going to give you a channel. Like, you need to know the back history of who you're working with, especially if you're going to open your energy up to people. Okay? Energy discernment is a huge thing. It's first taking me back to healing your lineage, okay? And bringing you back to white people. So let's go into that. So if you don't, if you are white and, we're, and you were born in Canada and you have, you know, that lineage, Spirit wants you to know that the white lineage that came over from Europe, right, was siphoned by darker energies, right? The white race has been siphoned eons before because it's the dark agenda to turn against other, other races, okay? So there is massive healing for white people to start coming in and supporting BIPOC, right? White people should be supporting the healers, okay? And in that turn, thank you, Spirit, Spirit saying, in that turn, that is the sacrifice of the ego. That is the giving up of your own power and control of what you desire and surrendering onto God. Yes, I want to heal and support people and make it right with my lineage. Make it right in my heart. Okay? I'm going to support these people completely. And God will then be able to exchange and give you back gifts that you've lost eons ago in your lineage that's what god's telling me right now okay so spirit is saying that when you're able to do that right there has to thank you god is saying you have to be able to come closer to the father closer to creator energies agila i which is the masculine energy okay because we are already sitting in the womb of the mother right the first step is to know the mother the real mother and then you will be able to connect to the father so spirit is saying that when you are able Thank you. It is not a sacrifice and how people think that it's a sacrifice that a God wants a sacrifice. And it's not about that. It is a proof that you have humbled yourself, that you have humbled yourself to God, that you are willing to let go of what you think you are. Okay. And how oh, I'm supposed to be a spiritual leader. I'm supposed to be all this. And to let that go, you have to surrender those ideologies. You know, myself included, I keep doing that. And God keeps bringing me back saying, yeah, but you are Rena. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Okay, I'm just going to accept it. Um, like, for instance, like for playing music and guitar, okay, which I'm probably going to do a little bit of that um, for you guys at the end of this so that you can get some healing out of this as well. Um, so Spirit is saying, like, it is an exchange of your ego. To say to spirit, yeah, I want to support people of color. The, I want to heal this part of my lineage, right? Now, some of you may have Cherokee blood in you, you know? You may have to go back and learn those ways to combine that with your white lineage and to heal that discrepancy that's inside of you of what the white lineage did to the Cherokee and what happened with the, the victimhood of the Cherokee not being able to rise in the system and forgiveness? That is a hard healing place within yourself, right? So this is where you seek out healers, <coughs> true healers, okay? And you will know the true healers because they you will feel it. 
you will understand it. You will under you, it will something will ring with you. Truth, right? Um, yeah. So spirit is saying, like, let's take this into like the whole twin flame journey aspect. I'm going to talk about my own journey. Um, I'm going to be honest, you guys. The New Age community has made a dogma out of the twin flame journey. It really has. Twin flames do exist. We've seen it with Jesus and Mary Magdalene, right? They were uh, amazing twin flames that came to pave the way, right, of Christ consciousness on the planet. But I don't see that holiness. You've got to match vibration, guys, right? How holy is Christ and Jesus Mary Magdalene? Oh, my God. You can feel that. You can feel that. Now hold that vibration. And now think of all the other twin flames. I don't see it. I does not. As soon as I do that, I'm like, no. Now, I did experience that with my twin, that holiness and that godlike. <coughs> However, I'm going to be honest. My twin is a wealthy white man, okay? And he cannot come through a discrepancy of his colonial family lineage that has been here for hundreds of years. He can't. Even what he finds attractive are, are beauty standards based on the matrix, skinny white women who don't have talent. And I'm not saying this to be mean, you guys. I'm saying it because it's the truth. <laughs> and I'm also saying it because this is what happens in the twin flame journey. Okay? A lot of divine masculines sit with complacency because it is what they know and what they can control and where they can be comfortable. That is not a worst. This is not what the earth needs right now. Okay? And when I see twin flames in the new age community, I don't believe they're twins because I don't feel that holiness of God. And the spirit is telling me it's a lot of manipulation that's happening in the, in the new age community. Okay? The new age community has to fall. It has to fall because these people aren't actually doing their work. They're not. I dare any of y'all listening to this who, who is in the New Age community, come drink ayahuasca with me. Come drink ayahuasca with me. Come do a psilocybin ceremony with me. You will see the misalignment. People who say, I'm going to talk about sacred union, divine union, let me help your relationship. You're not really in a real sacred union if you're not with your twin, right? Um, and, and it's fine if you can't come together with your twin. God will bring a holy person that is of the vibration that can match you. Now, I've had dreams of this native man that I'm going to meet in the rainforest. Can't wait to meet him. Um, I'm already getting visions of, of who God has for me. Okay, because my twin cannot match up. My twin cannot um, let go of what he thinks is attractive conditioning. Can't let go of his business and his way of life because it feeds the colonial system. Okay, it doesn't help the earth at all. Um, doesn't save the trees. It doesn't help the planet. Okay, it just creates more money and whatever. <clears throat> I can't be with somebody like that, okay? So, as Divine Feminines, we have to really be honest, you guys, because this isn't about having a romance, okay? I'm calling you Divine Feminines, okay? Do you not want to know your power, your gifts, heal your lineage, so that you are able to heal to the depths of your DNA, right? So that you know... That when you surrender yourself and stay in your lane, then God will then bring you your gifts to you and show you what those gifts are, okay? And so, uh, even though I, I'm saying, and Spirit wants me to bring this up, even though I call my twin's karmic partner basic, she is, um, it's not that I can't see that she has potential, okay? However, there has to be a letting go of selfishness, a letting go of... Um, who you think you're, because you're not a medicine woman. She is not a medicine woman. No way in hell will she ever be a medicine woman in this life. I know that. That's part of my gift. I know I can see alignment, okay? I call truth. I'm a Kali spirit. That is just the truth of, of, of my gift. If you don't like it, then you can click off, okay? That's just how I am. I can, and I've seen that my whole life. My parents have had trouble with me just talking the truth about people. Rena, you can't say that. 
that hurts that person's feelings. My sister would say that to my sister's a narcissist, but she would say, I, I will say that out loud too. She is. I won't heal with my, I've forgiven a lot, but I, and I, I'll be honest, I will not heal with my sister until she comes and drinks with me because time and time again, she has treated me like crap and does not honor my heart, my softness. And so, and I'm being honest. This is me. This is me. I'm going to be raw and honest. This I'll tell my life because people need to hear it. People need to hear the trials and tribulations. We need to be able to relate. We need to be able to know that we go through pain together, you guys. How can we heal humanity if you don't know the truth? Right? How can you not know if I don't share my life with you? Right? That's a warrior spirit. That takes guts. That takes courageousness. That takes courage. Right? And I'm doing this for you guys so that you guys can understand where my calling is. And so <clears throat> I'm saying these things because let's be honest in regards to you know, let's go back to spirits, bring me back to like the karmic partner and whatever else. It's like there are gifts to be known, but you have to let go of your selfishness of what you think your life is going to look like, what you think you're supposed to be building and get right with God and get right with the creator and heal your lineage and your privileges. Okay. If your lineage is pure white, like the karmic partner that my twin is with, you have to get real with yourself. You're not, like, again, like I was saying, you're not a medicine person, okay? Not everybody is. My sister's not a medicine person. She's not. She has something to do with music and medicine. I can see it. But she would have to drink with me. I already know that. I've already seen that calling. Um, you know, I have a dear, dear best friend since kindergarten, okay? She's my best friend. She's a white girl. She's Irish, you know, love her. She's my bestie in the whole world. This is why, like, I'm not against white people. But we have a beautiful friendship because she understands her privilege and she's seen me struggle my whole life with it, with, with growing up in a white place, you know? And that bond is so strong, you know? And this is where we need to come together, okay? Because when colonialism was happening on the planet, when we were being segregated, okay, People of color had to go eat from the earth, heal with the earth, because we weren't given anything from the white people. You know, I had to eat my dollar rice. My parents had to eat their dollar rice. Okay, my ancestors did. They had to, they didn't eat meat. They didn't eat anything. You know, we learned what made us strong. We, the earth told us what made us strong. We learned how to heal together, okay, and access codes in our DNA that the earth aligned us with. White people didn't, haven't done that for eons, guys. Okay? So where is your healing power? You can take all the courses for DNA activation and do sound baths and do all that. You can do all of that. It will only heal your white people. Only those people will be attracted to your work. If you really, if you're a white person and you are you have a spiritual calling and you know that, your lineage will have something to do with supporting BIPOC and to let that ego go so then your gifts can come and then things will flourish even more. You know, I have a lot of white clients. I have this one beautiful who wants to open this beautiful center and I can see that and I support her, you know, but I also know that she honors the work that I do so that we can actually bridge together and work together, that I can go on ceremony at her center, you know, um, or she honors, and she only brings in people of color to heal, you know, so she's holding this, the stature there for people, you know, the, the structure there, you know, and donating to, to, you know, Black Lives Matter or, um, indigenous, um, movements and things like that. This is what we need ha to happen, but that's not happening in the new age community. It's white people working for themselves, stealing the work. Okay. Like I'm saying, Shakti Pad and Ray K, all right, plant medicine, the medicine community, and taking that and profiting for themselves and not giving anything back to where they took it from. And that is the same karma that is happening, and that needs to change, right? I'm leaving Canada, you guys, okay? 
Um, I have some high connections in Guyana. And first generation Canadian here, but I can't do it. I can't do it. <coughs> I can't live in a colonial system anymore. Okay? I can't do it. Um, it's getting worse. And I don't have, like, a man, I, and, and it's not that I don't need a man to protect me, but for me to fall fully in my divine feminine, because I'm very solid, right? And for me to fall completely into that divine feminine, that masculine energy is to be around me, to protect me. That's what masculines do. And so I have written off the twin flame journey, and I think it's very important to do that, okay? Because these divine masculines... Especially if you're interracial, guys, okay? They're not ready to man up. They're scared little boys. Do you want a man child? I don't have time for that. God's already showing me this native man. Oh my God, he's so beautiful. He's so beautiful. Frag man. <coughs> he's been sitting in the rainforest calling for his woman, and I can feel it. And. He is of Amerindian descent. I can feel it. I'm seeing his long hair. And I know when I go to Guyana, I will meet him. And I know that we can open the center and we can do amazing things together. And we can really help heal the planet and bring people. The reason why I'm going back to Guyana is not just because of my lineage, but because um, you never get natural disasters there. It is the lungs of the earth because Guyana has the most protected rainforest in all the world. It has the most biodiversity in all of the world. And um, it's it's so pure. It's like the Garden of Eden. Um, it is some of the purest energy. You can drink from the river. It's clean. You can't do that very many places. You know, it is the next Costa Rica is what they're calling it. And so I'm moving in the next... I'm hoping next two years. I'm looking for land this year. Hopefully building in the next year. Out here in two. And then moving into the rainforest to... I'm scoping out property to purchase to um, build an eco-friendly healing center for you guys. To come. To be with nature. To learn the ways of, of BIPOC. You know? To drink some ayahuasca. To... Um, <clears throat> feel that reconnection of healing energy from the earth and so COVID thank you for bringing me back I gotta put a lot of links down below because it is a man made thing I have the antibodies now I will keep healing I will put out some readings as I can but as you can see my breathing is still not 100%, okay, but it, um, it's getting much better. I'm able to cook now. <laughs> um, I want you guys to realize that it was mastered and created to kill off people of color. Not that white people don't get it. White people do get it, okay? But if you look at the statistics, it's mostly BIPOC, and there is a reason for that, okay? We have to look at the seriousness of what colonialism has done to our planet, okay? That six of the subcontinents have been taken over by a white government. And now that the white population is slowly decreasing, they're making man-made viruses. And it's not right. There is no reason that I got this sick. I wouldn't go to the hospital, because screw that, because I don't trust the hospital. <laughs> so, um, a lot of prayer, and God walked me through all of it. God was with me. I can't tell you, with me. My creator, that I had to see what's really happening on this planet. It's evil. You guys, it's evil. It's really evil and I know that's hard to hear and I know it's hard for white people to I'm not telling white people to take the responsibility of that but it is what the system and the lineage has done but you can change it you need to support us you know I'm asking for like alliances because we need you you know but 
the humbling of the ego to the power of healing that BIPOC actually hold. You know, people are very, I'm gonna, and I'm going to just bring this up because God wants me to bring it up. People are very jealous of the power that I bring down. Very jealous of the power that I bring down. I had a friend who I thought was a friend, not a friend at all, um, used me. Um, could, saw me as a competition. She's a white girl. Could basically, a white girl, I'm be honest. Who saw me as a competition. Who didn't like my abrupt way of expressing myself. Who wanted me to be <coughs> some... I don't know, we have this idea of what enlightenment looks like. This is why I also don't agree with the gurus. Because the feminine energy has to rise. Okay? The power is in the feminine energies, I'm being honest, okay? It's not the it's not the men. Okay, guys, not the men. Sorry. Because before religion, go back to Mesopotamian Mesopotamian times, okay, they were the, the female goddess temples. Okay, that men came to seek that power. Okay, so women are the temples. Okay, so even the, these gurus, no. All religions have been manipulated, okay, and controlled. So I don't listen to gurus at all. And I've seen people who are like gurus and stuff go drink ayahuasca and they can't handle it, right? Because um, it broke their male ego of this, of what enlightenment is. Hi, geese. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um... And so, I had a friend who had massive competition issues with me, you know? I felt like saying to her, you know, because all of a sudden my music talent came out, I could play guitar, I could play ukulele, I could sing. Like, where is this coming from? I don't even know. <laughs> um, because I never played guitar my whole life. It just, I could pick it up and I could do it. It's, these are the gifts, right, that God brought to me. And um, for healing, for ceremony. And she couldn't handle it. She started to narcissistically attack me for how I expressed myself, for what I would say. She, she wanted me to tame myself, right? Which is why we have this thing in the New Age community of what enlightenment looks like. Like, I'm sorry about it. Not everybody's going to be like, oh, Zen. Oh, I love everybody. That's not me. I'm fire. I'm zazzy. I'm sassy. I'm... I walk into a room and I can change the energy. I am a goddess. I am a true goddess. And I will own and I own that. Okay? Men uh, they spill their coffee when they walk by me and I'm not saying that to be ego guys it's because people can feel the energy. I don't have to do anything. It just is. But a lot of Caucasian girls, especially the pretty ones, the ones that fit the model, right, that fit the society standard of beauty, have issues with me. Because they don't have it. Because you have to heal your lineage, right? True goddess energy, when you go back to Mesopotamian times, we were the temples. They came to seek us. And so this is the rise of the divine feminine. And this is why I work with a lot of divine feminines to tap back into that, no matter what your lineage is, okay? Your white lineage, and we're going to have to work through white, frig white fragility, we are the whole sensitivity thing and the whole thing that you have to be kind all the time because that's new age dogma that you have to be. And this is what this friend had shown me is like, you have to be this. Oh, no, I'm a Kali spirit. Have you seen Kali Ma? That's God gifted that to me. Okay. If you look at the earth, there are earthquakes and, and, um, volcanoes eruptions, there's thunderstorms, there's havoc, right? Earth, Mother Earth, has a very fiery brimstone side to her, okay? You can't, you have to be all energies to be in divine feminine goddess energy. Not, oh, I'm kind, let's hold a compassionate heart. No, that is white dogma new age crap that we are now putting a label on and how you're supposed to be. You are supposed to be you. And however you express yourself, that is how you're supposed to be. I got a big ass mouth and I will never shut the hell up. And I love it, you guys. I love it. And um, like I'm the life of the party too, you know? You wanna come dance? It's like I can dance, I can move, I can sing, I can dance, I can do all that stuff. It's like 
come and be with me. But I honor power in other divine feminines, right? Just because I have a lot of talents doesn't mean that I don't honor other talents. The issue is, is when people don't know their own lane, they attack and become jealous of you and try to put you down, okay? And so if you're finding that in your life and people keep putting you down, it's because you have a strong spirit. You are to express and be exactly who you are, okay? <coughs> And I really wanted to put that out today because I wanted, I wanted to bring a lot of awareness of what's happening on this planet, okay? Because I'm here for the planet. I'm not here for government. I'm not. I'm actually here to align uh, for the earth. The earth is the earth will heal, but I'm help, I'm here to help humanity come back into alignment with the earth, honestly, and to heal your lineage first, okay? Um, I'm not the type of person that's going to be like, let's figure out your calling spirit. When you coach with me and you come with to me, spirit will give me teachings to take you into very uncomfortable places that you may not want to look at. They're going to give me teachings to tell you that you're going to have to reconnect to your temple, to your body, to your lineage, to your mother, to that sibling that you don't want to deal with. All of those things that you've been avoiding, God shows me where that healing needs to be and what you need to do to get into that kind of alignment, okay? And it's not easy work. Healing is not easy, right? You need you need a good healer that's going to be able to stand beside you who can go through those dark places with you, okay? Because I don't see that in the New Age community either because they haven't fully healed their stuff. You know, I, I ask all of them, come, come drink with me or even just come and be in my presence for a day. Truly. Okay. And let's call that shit out and let's really look at it. We have to be humble to come to God, you guys. We have to be humbled in ourselves to finally accept who we are as these souls. <coughs> We have to heal the lineage that we're in. I think that's all I really wanted to say. Um, let me take a sip of water and see if Spirit has anything else. Yeah. Right. The Spirit is saying, like, to get that clear connection, guys, is prayer. Prayer and humbling your heart to God, to your creator. I don't deal with spirit guides, angels. I don't get any of that crap in the New Age community, okay? Why are you talking to angels? Why don't you go to God? Why are you talking to spirit guides? Go to God. Go to your creator. This is why I can't stand the New Age dogma stuff. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't. Nobody does. Me, nobody. Okay? Because the moment that you... Okay, if you haven't healed that lineage and that privilege or or the victimizehood or whatever it is that's going on in your lineage, if you haven't healed that in your ancestry line, okay, you are not going to have a clear channel and you can be easily manipulated. Every human on this planet has attachments to demons. Everyone on this planet has attachment to the dark grid codes that are here on the planet and it comes from your lineage okay because for eons these dark things has been siphoning through manipulation mind tactics. this is why i love ayahuasca because it heals the psyche right the psychological aspects of your lineage right and it brings you back to an alignment to earth and so the thing is is like if <laughs> If these healers and these new, new age people and you're not actually healing that, okay, and you're like, but it's all good intention. If I just have a good intention, then I can do good. No, your intention means nothing if you haven't healed your lineage because what happens in your DNA, everything happens from inside of you, not outside, guys. This is not about pulling energy into, into you. That's new age dogma. I don't deal with that. You go deep into yourself. God is a small whisper inside of yourself, okay? You got to go deep, deep, deep down into yourself, humbled in prayer to your creator, okay? 
and God will guide you on the next steps. Okay, when you are in pain, when you are suffering, it is to get in prayer. When you are wanting to manifest, it is to go within yourself and to start speaking to your creator. And just say that to my creator who created my soul. Like, I want to form a strong bond with you. And that's what I do with people when they come and work with me. It's about your relationship with God. Not your damn angels. Not your freaking guru. Not your freaking yoga teacher. Not your angel guides. None of that. None. None. It is you and God. You and creator. I take it right to the get-go. That's who you should be talking to. Forget everybody else in between because you don't know who you're talking to. I have had experiences with very dynamic things my entire life. I still get attacked. Okay. I had some guy who was a client. If you look on my, on my community page who needed extra help and through the zoom connection siphoned my information and took $5,000 out of my, this is the dark shit that happens to me all the time. But I also know that God has my back, so I don't do anything because karma will play out. Um, I also got a warning about it, but I didn't listen to the warning. So, you know, God will keep testing you to know your faith with the Father, with Creator energy. And when we've, every time we move away from the Creator and you decide to do a human decision, it will never work out. So then we do this back and forth playing all the time, right? Because this is what I'm saying. Like, what really is free will? Your free will, right? Your free will is only to choose your human mind and what you think is right for you. Because when you start following creator, you have surrendered that and you are allowing God to guide you. <coughs> do you think that I would have ever thought that I would move back to move to Guyana? And take my children there. No. What? That's God's idea. That's not my that's not my idea. Alright. Um No. <laughs> that's really funny. Because that's only recently come about, right? So that's not something that I would even do. Like that is God's plan. Do you see? It's not my logical decision. Gee, what am I gonna I don't know, I like I was thinking of Costa Rica. You know? God's like Guyana. You need to heal your people. <sighs> I'm like, okay. Guyana it is. You know? And I go wholeheartedly. Because I know that the power of the creator will make that way for me. And that is the surrender place that I really want to try and bring people to. Because there really is no free will. Right? The free will is your rational choice to choose something that you think. And we need that too, guys. Don't <coughs> don't think that you don't need that. Sometimes we need to make those choices to see how we're manifesting and what we're creating and where I, we keep suffering. Until we finally listen to God and say, I'll just humble myself and just go do that. Because I'm tired of fighting it. You know, because you made a contract with your creator. And this is where I'm taking you out of the blueprint of the destiny and into the blueprint <coughs> of your fated path with God. And that comes through healing your lineage, first and foremost. All right, guys. I'm going to sing you a little something. Let me just catch my breath. I'm going to sing you a song called Aguila. It is about the creator. And um, that was very fiery. <laughs> that was a lot of emotion. I wanted to share that with all of you. I wanted you to know what's been going on with me. As you can see, I'm still very... <sighs> but it's getting better. And it's slow. And God's telling me that it has to be slow. So that I don't forget this. Because this is what's happening to BIPOC. And I wanted to share that with all of you. I know there's a lot of evil that's happening in this world. Okay? With the vaccines and all of that. Like, I'm not even getting the vaccine. I won't do it. I'm not getting it. Uh, I will post some links down below of who I've been following about COVID. If it helps you guys, I'll post whatever I can. I would love to hear your comments about this. If you want to work with me, I am... Um, my calendar's not quite open yet, um, but if you want, email me. I'm going to be opening up in a month. I'm going to be doing some readings. Um, I'm going to try and get some readings out this week if I can. 
but again, this is where my breathing is at, so <sighs> I'm doing my best, okay, because <laughs> I'm still healing. Um, yeah, let me just, I'm going to pause this, and then I'll take you out with the song. All right. <sighs> this is a little bit of the energy that I bring down. I'm going to do my best to sing with my breathing. <coughs> Um, please close your eyes and I ask Creator to come in with the Aguila, which is the eagle. The song is about the Creator, the masculine energy, to come in and to create peace and harmony and to align humanity into a new world. <clears throat> and this is all about flying.
Thank you for following me. Thank you for sending your prayers and your healing. It's helped. And I am so grateful for all of you. And um, I'm sending so much love. And I will do my best to make those videos for you guys since I'm still healing. But thank you so much. And I love you guys. I would love to hear your comments on this. Bye.